Yes, today is David Hollenbach of Hollenbach Leadership. David, how are you? Uh, live streaming, we're really on another uh, trajectory of the Neil Haley Show. But we're going to talk more about the whole mental health situation with first responders and how you're still not seeing enough help is necessary for them to get well, meaning they're not identifying things before it becomes a real issue, right? Do you just not, why don't they have those programs in place before it happens? Well, I think they're, they're starting. I mean, there are programs in place. There are, it's just the education piece before firefighters and cops become firefighters and cops, you know, and, and typically when people are starting their careers, they're young and there isn't really a whole lot of thought put into what uh, these calls could be doing to my mental health because, you know, it, when you first get into it, it's cool. You know, it's an adrenaline rush and, uh, you know, you see some pretty gnarly things, but, you know, that, that adds up. It adds up and it compounds on itself. And uh, before you know it, you're drinking or what, whatever it is that you, know, you do to feel. Self-medicate yourself yeah. versus other reasons. And what do you think that's not preparing people enough? Like, especially when you were in a high admin position, when people first become a first responder to really understand what they're signing themselves up for. I mean, it really is education and it's the culture, you know, you've got to have, uh, you know, seasoned veterans talk about, you know, the, the dangers of the job and by dangers, I mean, not just like the real physical danger, but the danger to our mental health and it needs to be spoken about candidly and not you know the the machismo has to be set to the side you know yeah i was watching law and order organized crime and christopher maloney's character and the mental health situation he's going through it's great that they're talking about that on law and order I don't know. I don't watch Chicago fire or any of the other ones on the other, uh, but I do watch law and order uh, organized crime. And they really show Maloney what he's gone through uh, throughout that process of losing his wife, and, you know, all these different things on the job. Uh, and it's good that they're showing this, but it's like, they're just really only showing the thing of counseling versus the demons and the struggles that you go through every day. Right. And I wish that we would know it. Counseling sometimes can also hurt, right? When you're kind of re talking about what happened to you, that's hard, right? Yeah. And I mean, there's different schools of thought because there is a, a type of therapy um, where you basically immerse yourself in whatever scenario uh, is, is troubling you, you know, because it's more typical for military um, where there may be like one really bad battle or maybe they experienced the loss of one of their buddies. It's a singular incident where it's more complex with fire department and law enforcement where it's years upon years upon years of traumatic events. And, you know, you, you try and, isolate okay well what's the worst call that you've ever been on which which one haunts you the most and then you relive that over and over and over again and, and they think that these, works well there is research that says that it works but how it works is it desensitizes you to that trauma um you know there's which EMDR. means that you go home and then you're desensitized to your family you're desensitized to many things, I think. Yeah, that that is uh, a topic of discussion. <laughs> but you know, there 
when you look at the research, it seems like an effective method where EMDR is a lot less invasive and it does an incredible job. It's like voodoo. Explain that more for us. Uh, EMDR is eye movement desensitization uh, something. <laughs> okay, but just explain it. That's okay. You didn't know the, the acronym. Well, it's it's about eye movement and activating the different parts of your brain as you're thinking or reliving a, a certain event. Um, and, and you just kind of follow where it takes you and, and it kind of helps your brain rewire itself. Hmm. But you still have to relive that event once. Well, not just once. And you're not really going through every detail like you would with the immersion therapy or, uh, I don't even know if that's the right word for, for that therapy. Uh, right. But right you know what what i'm talking about yeah it's just i just think that i'm just more and more thinking when we do tell our problems does it make us feel like we have more problems how do we feel after talking about these experiences right these tough yeah. situations the past and yeah. that i would have love to have that conversation with therapists now ptsd what do you think are the best treatments for it in your opinion once you get to that level yeah, I would say EMDR uh, is probably one of the best modalities for PTSD. Um, you know, there's uh, CBT, cognitive beha behavior therapy. therapy. Yeah, I think cognitive behavioral therapy is really good. I did it just to go through just uh, the process. And I like where you use BioNear feedback and stuff like that. Have you ever done that? Yeah, where they have the, that stuff works. It's it makes you really learn how to focus more. Yeah. And to we would never thought just staring at somebody. This is now I'm you're bringing it back to me how we don't stare and we don't let our brain work. We let our eyes work. We let our bodies work instead of our brains. Yeah. So that so they're saying that maybe is better than cognitive behavioral therapy potentially. Yeah, the um, the MDR, well, so it depends. You know, I don't think there's any one size fits all for, for PTSD. You know, I think that people need to explore. I mean, like, uh, there there's different drug therapies. Right. And, you know, they're using psilocybin and... Uh, Gosh, other, other things, uh, hallucinogenic, yeah. psychedelics. So do you think it's too late to cure PTSD in your opinion or not? Um, I, don't know, I don't know that there's a cure. I think, yeah. I think there's uh, a lot of education that can be done ahead of time to help people uh, prepare their minds and bodies for the traumas that they're going to face. Yeah. How do you recommend, this is a great question because you, you, again, you were diagnosed with PTSD. How do you recommend somebody without PTSD to be in a relationship or around somebody who has PTSD? What are the things that they should do to make life easier for someone who has it? Uh, again, it's going to be education, knowing that sometimes it's not you, even though your partner is directing their frustration at you. It's mm -hmm. like, there's no place to put it. Yeah. You know, and everything is so big. Every emotion is so big that where does it go? And a lot of times the negative emotions fall on the people that we love and it's it's safe there almost you know it, it's kind of morbid but it, it's safe to lash out you know and that's the only thing i can that's i'm probably not saying it right but yeah you know you're definitely saying it right that when somebody who's gone through ptsd and has had ptsd they are not able sometimes to 
utilize their emotions in the manner that they do it. And then based on a trigger, lash out on a loved one, a friend or somebody because of something that happened to them just now might have nothing to do with that other person, but that's how they cope through anger, through misunderstandings, things like that. And that's why other people turn to alcohol and drugs instead of just dealing with it and dealing with each incident and situation. That means the person that's with someone with PTSD has to have patience. Can't be a very angry person. Want to cause fights and do all those different things, or it's a, it's a, it's a recipe of disaster, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. How would you give me some examples of people with PTSD of an experience that you've, you've learned because you, you've been part of this, right? You've had it, but you've also worked, talked to other people and stuff like that, where in a, their daily life, you know, that, you know, that's the reason why that, that, that definitely seems like a sign of PTSD. Well, I can describe an incident that, um, it's not that big of a deal, but it was for me. Okay. So, uh, I was in my bedroom. My daughter was having a sleepover and they were doing gymnastics or something. I don't know what they were doing. Maybe they were making videos for TikTok. I, I don't know. <laughs> they were they were doing something and uh, one of my musical instruments got knocked over and it was very loud. Uh, I believe it was a trombone or a trumpet, one or the other, um, something a brass instrument fell to the ground and crashed and something else fell and crashed and it was very loud and it startled me. And I came out of my room and scolded my daughter in a way that I normally don't. Mm. Um, And it was an accident and I knew it was an accident, but I, I scolded her and I, and I hurt her feelings. And it's one of those things that I never want to do that out of anger or frustration or something like that i want to be if she does something wrong then yeah cool collected address the situation but in that situation it was emotion and it was i i can only say it was like a fear response wow and i had to apologize you know when i when i saw what it did uh, to her uh, fun night, you know, I had to apologize and reassure the girls that it was okay. You know, you guys have fun. You know, I'm sorry. You s- scared me. You know. Interesting. And then the other types of things that happen, that's a great example. The other things are just basically just, just how quickly you can turn zero to a thousand out of nothing. Right. Yeah. And it just happens. Yeah. And, uh, but a lot of people cope with anger and don't have PTSD like that. And that's how they handle it. Yeah. But then once they identify it, but once you get to a certain level, are there reminders also that you have a PTSD of a certain thing that you watch a television show or a certain thing that can trigger you as well? Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of stuff that's triggering. It's just recognizing you know, that physiological effect, you know, feeling the tension or, you know, feeling your body tense up or even starting to perspire. Um, It's, uh, it's recognizing it before and, you know, the emotions get too high. Wow. I love having this conversation because this is something that just doesn't have a conversation and some quick symptoms of somebody who's not first responder that could have ptsd what things do you spot that say hold on here there there definitely could be it and like some people that diagnose themselves with ptsd without having a health professional do it or the wrong health professional did the diagnoses what like you know some of those quick warning signs before we finish up that hey you know what it could be ptsd yeah you know, if you go to my website, um, there I have a resources page for mental health, and there's actually uh, the 
a National Center for PTSD. I have a link on, on my website for the National Center for PTSD. And there's a different checklist to really see where you're at on the scale. Um, I, hey, I'm willing to, to look at this right now. I'm going to go to Hall and Back Leadership right now while we're talking and uh, take a look at that, David. And, you know, it's this is the impromptu part of what you do. Why people love you, man, and this is the truth. If you go to his YouTube channel and you see some of these things and you go to his TikTok or you go to other places and his podcast, it really he really speaks to the human being and the human psyche of what happens. Because, David, you've overcome so many things uh, through that. So I'm going to resources and services, and it's the mental health resource section. And the ACE study, which you talked about before, emotional in a survey more than 8,600 Americans in 2003 about two-thirds report experiencing at least one of these events below as a child so emotional abuse gives you a bigger chance right 10.10 percent physical abuse sexual abuse parental separation or divorce can lead to PTSD oh my god mental health illness in the household substance abuse and incarcerated member that gives an opportunity for PTSD right the ACE study yeah, it it do, it definitely does um, make you more susceptible, I believe, to PTSD. I don't know that there's research. I'm sure. Well, yeah, I'm sure there is. I just don't know of it. Um, yeah, I'm, that, there's definitely ways of looking at that. But there's such good things to obtain. Scale, download. We'll we'll do it next time we record next week. Let's go through this because I think this will be great for our our, our listeners and viewers. Are they potentially have signs of PTSD? Because we always misexamine it. Hey, remember we talked about in one of the episodes I thought was really good. It said, are you the kind of real risk taker? You know, ADHD people definitely mirror signs of PTSD, right? If you're an ADHD because of some of the craziness and different yeah. types of things that someone with PTSD would do or ADHD. Well, you know, and that, that's funny that you say that because there are certain things that just seem to go uh, together with PTSD and, you know, ADD, ADHD, that is uh, a common co uh, analysis, you know, people are diagnosed with ADD or ADHD, you know, and, and they have PTSD you know, one or one or the other, and then they find out that they have the other, you know? And I think that the biggest thing is therapy of some sort. I look at things where I was going through a very rough time in my separation and divorce of, uh, and I just sharing this with everybody is self-hypnosis. How much that listening to something positive every night through your sleep that's giving you a positive self-hypnosis to Raj Global on Clubhouse. Every night I'm in his room listening for eight to 10 hours about the law of attraction and different things. And what that does is give you that where you wake up refreshed. Your sleep is such an important time that cannot be stressful, cannot be that because that's what leads to our next day, right? And I think the more that we have a positive outlook on life, things start to change because our brain starts to react differently to people react differently to situations. And that's the process. So I would recommend hypnosis or self hypnosis for anybody uh, because what it does is it gets rid of some of the things in the subconscious that cause those things. I, I flat out say I'm a different person. Thanks to Garage global. Uh, so Hey, it was great conversation, David. I look forward next week to go into that checklist, dive deeper because PTSD, no one is, af everyone's afraid to talk mental health. And I see it as a mission to talk about it. For example, you know, we are so child abuse, mental verbal abuse is not considered abuse in child abuse, but physical abuse is. And I think that mental abuse is far worse than physical abuse. We look at people, how many people depressed and all those different things. This is a battle we need to develop. And it was a good conversation. I'm sure you're going to get a lot of feedback on TikTok and Facebook and all those different places. Appreciate it, Dave. And we'll talk soon, man. Uh, brother.
All right, you're listening and watching The Neil Haley Show, and we'll be back in just a moment.